I've got this sensor to look at today. So this is the SHT31, which is a temperature and humidity sensor. So this is quite a nice physical design. So it's got some DuPont leads at one end, so, that, so you could easily connect it to stuff like the Raspberry Pi and little sort of, I'm not sure what these connectors are called, but little four pin connector there. Um, and what else? There's a little switch on here that can change the address because this is a I squared C device, um, which means it's relatively straightforward to connect to microcontrollers, uh, to the Arduino. And well, today I'm going to connect it to the Raspberry Pi Zero because that's what I've got to hand. So I've looked at a few sensors in my videos before, so you might recognize some of these if you see my if you've seen my videos before. So this is one that I tested. This is obviously made for the microbit because it's very much in the style of the, the microbit circuit board. So this is the uh, BM35, which is a temperature sensor. So this produces a voltage that's proportional to the um, uh, to the temperature. So you read it with an A to D port, basically. This one here I really like. So the DS18B20, which you can see is in the style of a transistor. So it's a three-leg device. Um, it's a, it's a one-wire device, so uh, it can work with either two or three lines connecting it to the microcontroller. And you can actually stack them up. You can put them in a bus, as I've done here, so you can read multiple temperatures from different places on, on the same bus. That's pretty neat, I think. So that one I've made a video on before. And then these ones are very common. So this is the uh, DHT11. You find these in a variety of different mountings and formats, and they're quite cheap at various sellers. Uh, there's, there's also a DHT22, which I haven't looked at, but I understand it's a more precise version of, of these. So you pay a bit more money and you get, uh, you know, like half a degree extra of precision, something like that. And these, these ones are quite often used for measuring temperature and humidity because you can get both measurements through the same thing as you can with this SHT31 that I'm looking at today. Um, so what distinguishes these two in particular is uh, th this one, the DHT11 and its bigger brother, the 22, they use a, uh, a one-wire interface, so, um, so you need a special driver to you know, to be able to read it, which is not, you know, it's, it's not a huge problem. I mean, those drivers exist for uh, Arduino and for Raspberry Pi. But this is uh, using I squared C, so it's very standardized. And um, I hope I can show how quick and easy it is to get this going with the Raspberry Pi. So this is, it's got a thing to hold the wires coiled up, which is quite nice. So that's the brand. CQ robot. Um, so there's just the four connections. So you've got power, VCC and ground, and then SDA, SCL, which get connected to the I squared C lines. So, so here's my Raspberry Pi 0W. So this one I've already connected to the Wi-Fi here. Um, so I should be able to connect into here using SSH and um, and show you the steps for making it work with the I squared C sensor. So we've got red and black are power. So 
so black to ground should be one two three and three point three volts dump in there and then SDA is green should be that one and SCL the very next one there so with any luck that's all the wiring that needs to be done so I'll just switch to the computer and we'll start to look at uh, how to see this thing on I squared C ah just one thing we ought to just check what the address pin says so we've got address hexadecimal 44 or 45 and it's switched to 45 at the moment so that's what we'll look for when we're trying to uh, commission this sensor so here on the Raspberry Pi the um, first thing that we need to do is check that the I squared C is enabled so if I run sudo raspy config I need to look at interfacing options I squared C and I want to enable yes okay so it's enabled I, I don't know if you need to do a reboot to bring that into action but I'm pretty sure that I squared C is already enabled on on this uh, uh, Raspberry so I'm going to leave that the the other thing is we need to install the I squared C tools so um, we need to do apt install I uh, see two tools is it sudo Okay, and the, in fact the I squared C tools is already installed on this Raspberry, so it didn't change anything. But we need that because we need to run I squared C detect, so uh, I squared C detect, which should scan the bus and see if there are any devices available. Let's see, one is the incantation there we go so we see a map on the screen and you see that the four five um, uh, is, is is filled in there so that shows shows us that's a device that's responding on four five now if I flip the switch on the CQ robot thing we can run it again and you can see now it's responding to four four so um, so you can have these these two different addresses depending on what you need and if you've got two of these uh, the same sensors you can obviously run them both in parallel one with each address now to actually use the thing from Python let's do this interactively so I need to do a couple of imports uh, hang on, no, I'm missing out a step, aren't I? We need to make sure that we've got the library. So let's install this library. Um, I'm going to use a library from Adafruit, which is a nice company that makes electronics, and they also program a lot of libraries. So I'm I'm not sure if CQ Robot have their own library for this, but. Um, I get good results with Adafruit, so I'm going to use them. OK. 
can take a little while on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W to do these things because it doesn't have that much uh, processing power. Okay, so we're going to Python 3 import some libraries and the new one eat fruit that's right okay and we'll define i squared c object using this bus io library This is board.scl, board.sda. I think these are the defaults, but I'll put them in full anyway. And then we can define the sensor itself. Fruit T31D. D. Um, based on the I squared C object. And I think we need to put the address of the board, which was 44. Okay, so that didn't complain. I'm assuming that's good. We'll have a look at what's in the sensor object. We can see various things in there. I can see frequency, I2C device, temperature, and relative humidity. So it looks quite simple to um, to use this. So we just say sensor dot temperature. So it's 19 degrees uh, centigrade. So it's a, a bit cool in here. And um, So humidity is 56%. Um, so if I put my finger on the sensor, we should be able to read a higher temperature. So let me do that. So it's gone up to 27 now with my thumb on it. 29. So you can see it's quite sensitive, uh, quite fast measuring, which not all sensors are. So I've taken my thumb off it now, so it's gone back down to 27, 26. You can see the temperature falling. So I could put those same commands in a in a script, and we can run it automatically. So um, let me just spend a couple of minutes putting that together. So let me show you what I've come up with. So I've got the same imports that I had when I was running it directly in the Python interpreter. I've also import imported this time library because I need to put a uh, a pause in the program, a sleep. So you can see um, I've got the same uh, setup that I had before, defining the I squared C bus and then defining the sensor. So I've got 45 here. So let me just flip it over on, make sure that I've got port 45 on the sensor. And then the main part of the program here, so we've got while true, so it will execute these three statements forever. So um, you'll see here if we look at the end, uh, back here we've got sensor.temperature, so I'm reading the temperature out. I'm using this um, formatter to make it pretty on the screen. So 
this uh, slash u zero zero b zero is a is um a degree symbol so it's like prints a degree and this little bit of magic is to um truncate to one decimal place so we've got the temperature here and then a similar thing for the relative humidity one decimal place uh, and that's the variable there sensor dot relative humidity so let's give that a go and there we go so that will just loop around reading the settings and just put my oh I just managed to crash the uh, crash the program by touching the sensor have I there we go it's back on again now so I'll just put my thumb on the sensor again you can see the temperature going up and then coming back down again and for fans of Fahrenheit is the Fahrenheit version So they're basically the same, but I've put this little calculation in here. So to get again the Celsius reading times nine divided by five, and then add thirty-two for the uh, the zero crossing. So there we go. Extremely easy to set up. Um, a nice little sensor. And uh, I mean, this this one's a bit more pricey than the DHT11, but very easy to use. And um, um, I've heard that these ones can saturate after some months of use. That you can you end up with the humidity sensor not uh, not reading very well any longer. But there we go. The SHT. 31 sensor from CQ Robot.